lost anything in your years of paranormal investigating that you couldn't handle. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was a new paranormal investigator, there was a lady um, that was supposedly possessed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, as an investigator, I learned never go to a place by yourself. Uh, always bring another investigator for safety reasons. And I was a new investigator, got a phone call, went over there, and it was these two ladies, and supposedly they got possessed, and one of them chased me out with a baseball bat. <laughs> and Terry, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm not afraid of ghosts, not afraid of demons, but I'm damn sure afraid of a 30-year-old woman with a baseball bat. Baseball bat. <laughs> wow, that is okay. That, that's crazy. Did you did you did she get the help that she needed? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Any ghost hunting group that goes over there, good luck. God, God bless you. Oh my God. Uh, have you ever come across anyone in all your years of investigating where someone bought, uh, let's say a residential, that, because uh, I, I asked everybody this question also, uh, that has mental issues and thought they had something going on in their house? Oh, you know, we, we actually at one time, uh, had Stacy Myers on the team, and she was a certified psychologist. So she, uh-huh. she would actually sort of analyze people, and she would tell me, you know, off to the side, you know, privately, say, hey, Paul, this person, you know, definitely has some mental issues. So, I mean, one of we had a case um, uh, that came up, and I had to turn it down because it was definitely mental issues. This woman has her brother living in, at her house, and she takes care of him. And he sees demons, and he sees demons because he throws his feces on the wall, and a demon will appear appear on his feces. Well, I'm not going to go over there and look at his feces and tell you there's a demon face in his feces. I, I just, right? I'm not, I'm sorry, Terry, I ain't, I ain't doing it. <laughs> don't send me out there. Don't, I agree with you on that one. Please, Terry, don't send me out there. I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, give me, give me a percentage on what you think is, I ask people on this on the show, that more mental uh, than, uh, than paranormal. Because some people say, well, you know, ment- you know, if you're going to do it, it's like 60-40. It's more mental than it is anything else. For the simple fact that people are taking things that they shouldn't take. People are, and these pharmaceuticals today are putting things in, uh, you know, into... Uh, drugs that supposedly help your heart out. Let's say, you know, it could be 80%, but you have that 20% of that other drug that might make you, you know, delusional. It might make you see things. Uh, so what would your number be on something like that? To be honest with you, Terry, I would have to put it at like in 80%. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of mental issues out there. Um, yeah, there's a lot. And that 20% where it's actually paranormal, my, usually I'll walk out of a house and my mind will be blown because it's definitely paranormal. I mean, just like the woman who was crying and she saw her dogs in the, in the, uh, the designer orbs. I mean... Mm-hmm. I totally, totally believe her. 
I mean, I saw dogs in the orbs, and she's saying those are her dogs. In fact, she even brought out some pictures of them, and it did. It looked like their faces. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, now, let's, let, let's change it up for a minute. Let's talk about, do you live in Sacramento, or do you live on the suburbs? Uh, Elk Grove. Uh, it's a city next to Sacramento. But okay. it's, what's it's the, in Sacramento. What's the population of that town? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would have to How look it up. Huh? There's maybe a hundred thousand. Yeah, something like that. It's there's a lot of people out here. Mm, okay, so how does the community? How does the community of that town? What do they think about Paul? Um. Well, they don't call me any bad names, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, uh, they um, some people are for very much intrigued. Um, it, it seems like they buy buy my books and stuff, you know. So, um, which is cool. In fact, I'll show you one of my latest books. And I okay. I used to be in the comic book industry, so I have sometimes comic book artists, and that's me as a demon warrior. That's my nickname. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like they're very intrigued. Uh, when they s stop me and talk with me, they, they're they curious about the paranormal. Is it real? Uh, have I seen anything? Have I been abducted by a UFO? I mean, they're curious. They're curious. Uh, have you, how do you feel about the historical society in your town? Um, they actually have some of my books, and so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, uh, I love history, and they seem like they're trying to get, gather up all the history of Elk Grove, California, and oh. place it into a museum, so I think that's really cool. I love, uh, the archives. Um, um, a lot of, in fact, a lot of my books are at the archives at Bowling Green University in Ohio, Bowling Green, Ohio. So they have a whole collection of my books. Um, my books can be found in other places, but yeah, I love people who preserve history and you need that history too if you're conducting an investigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they able to let you investigate in some of their locations that they, you know, that they, eat, you know, they sponsor or they maintain or anything? Um, uh, in some situations, like I did Chinese camp, and the uh, people um, of uh, Nevada City, um, I actually uh, met the mayor and some of the city council, and they allowed me to investigate a closed area, which was Chinese camp. So that was really cool. Um, where else uh, did I do? Um, yeah, there's a, certain places where politicians have actually allowed my group, Halo Paranormal Investigations, go in and investigate. So, um, I would say maybe, maybe about five places. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were you able to, uh, were you able to disclose what you found to them? Oh, yeah. Or absolutely. They... Yeah, absolutely. And those places were haunted. One of the places I investigated was the California State Library. And there was a, um, a ghost of an old man who wore these glasses and is looking through books and he haunts the place. So I was allowed in there to do a small investigation. Hmm, interesting. Now <laughs> California California is an interesting state. It's not as old as some other states in the East. Right. Oh yeah. But it yeah. has but it has a lot of history to it. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh, 
how does now when you do residential do some of the cases evolve around the land the property itself or like you say it evolves around an object that was brought in to the house or something somebody did something they shouldn't have been doing opening up a window using a Ouija board so on and so on it, it, it could be a, a multiple explanation it, it could be the land it could be uh, someone died in the house I mean or it could be an object uh, just like this woman she went to the antique shop she bought a grandfather's clock she brought the grandfather's clock back to her house and all of a sudden the cabinets are opening um, uh, forks were coming out of the drawer um, she heard her footsteps her house became haunted because she bought that grandfather's clock which was haunted so when she returned the grandfather's clock the house was no longer haunted so it, it just all depends um, do you know anything about living ghosts Can't say that I do. Okay, yeah. Um, let me school you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm willing to learn. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a case. Okay, it wasn't my case, but I want to tell you about a case because I've had cases similar to this. 1974, Chicago, Illinois. This couple moves into this house around about two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. They would see a man manifest and walk over to the couch. And a woman would manifest. And the guy is seen slapping the woman. Oh, wow. And then both of them would dissipate and disappear. Well, this happened a few times over. And one day, they're invited to a block party. And the host of the block party says, yeah, we do this every year. We party, we eat good, we listen to good music and everything else. And they go, oh, this is great. And he goes, look, these are our photo albums of our past events. So she goes, do you mind if I look at it? And he goes, yeah, look at it. So she's looking through the photo album. Then all of a sudden she sees this couple. And she goes, oh, my God. She goes, those are the ghosts in my house. And the wow. guy and the guy goes, What? Those are the ghosts in your house? What are you talking about? He goes, Yeah, they lived in your house. The police were there all the time because of domestic disputes. But they got a divorce. She lives five blocks down the road, still alive, and he moved out of state. And he's still alive. So how can they be ghosts? Exactly. So they threw out so much negative energy into the atmosphere by being physical with his wife mm -hmm. that it replays over and over and over again. It's residual energy. Negative oh, energy. Wow. And it could be also too positive energy. You can have positive energy that will replay itself over and over again. In one of my cases at Epimanon, no, I'm sorry, um, Evangelines, which is a costume shop, on the third floor, back in the 70s, it was Deal Mills, a disco, a disco nightclub. And the employees of Evangelines, which is a costume shop, they will hear the shuffling of feet. They'll hear people laughing. They'll, they'll hear sometimes uh, disco music, uh, like Disco Inferno by the Tramps. But there's no, no speakers up there. There's no thing for them to play music. But yet they're hearing the Tramps at 3 o'clock in the morning, playing Disco Inferno. So, that nightclub exists by the residual energy of happy people uh, 
doing their disco thing, disco doing the hustle and everything else. That music is still going on. Yeah, yeah. No, that's strange. Hey, let's talk about something. No, hey, man, a couple of people I know don't like to talk about. Let's talk about paranormal and religion. Paranormal what? Um, and religion. Oh, and religion. Religion. Um, can I be excused for just one little minute? I need it. Go okay. help yourself. I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> I got you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. All right. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about uh, paralyt- uh, no, paranormal and religion. You know, uh, that's like adding fuel to the fire. But, you know, I'm one of those guys that like to talk about it. Well, hello, Paranormal Connections. How you doing today, sir? Appreciate you listening to us. Uh, what do you think about paranormal and religion? Well, um, I was born and raised a Catholic. So I do a Catholic blessing. Um, I definitely believe in angels. I believe that angels are here to protect you if you call upon them and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a real religious person. I don't go to church all the time and everything else. But I do believe in my cleansings. I do believe that when I summon angels to protect someone, to get the demon out of the house, it seems to work. Um, my cleansings, they seem to work. I, I would say um, 80% that they work. 20% no, um, because maybe they'll go back and dabble into black magic or... Uh, do some kind of Satan thing or whatever, but um, um, but yeah, with my Roman Catholic house blessings, they do work. And also too, if you have an attachment, a demonic attachment, um, I do a full submersion baptism, and I use holy water. I bless the water and everything else. I'm not an ordained. I'm not ordained, but I was trained by two priests on how to do a house blessing. And um, and they provided me with some reading material to read about it and stuff like that. Not knowing that I was going to become a paranormal investigator, but I started utilizing it. Didn't know if it was going to work or not. But then I had all these people calling me and saying, Paul, you got rid of the demon, or you got rid of the ghost, or whatever. Um People who had attachments when I did a full submersion baptism, I didn't know if it was going to work, but it does work. And that's a basic form of exorcism. And a lot of people don't even realize that. But that's what I utilize in my investigations and cleansings. Now, why do you think most it's paranormal investigating is acceptable in some religions and not in others? I have that. I have no idea. Um, I've I've done cleansing. I've I've done investigations of all religions, Hindu, Buddha, everything else. In fact, in my team, when I really had a team, um, I had Buddha cleansers. So we went to a Buddha home. They would do the cleansing. We had Hindu cleansers. We had Miwok 
Native American cleansers. Um, we had, uh, what else did we have? Um, oh, we had Greek Orthodox cleanser. So we, we were covering all the religions. And if there was a religion that we didn't have an investigator for, we start studying on a type of cleansing for them. So yeah, um, we 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 embrace all religions. We don't just say, "Oh, I'm a Roman Catholic, and that's all I believe." N no, we okay. don't we don't do that. We if you're a Hindu, we respect it. We're going to get you a Hindu cleanser. Okay. Uh you know, one thing I do notice is the big church, the Catholic church, has kind of went left when it comes to paranormal investigations or, you know, or when it comes to uh, paranormal findings. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, you know, that, you know, are Catholic that don't believe in what we do or we shouldn't be doing it at all. You know, but we have to let think about the, in the ancient times when the Catholic Church was at its at its peak, because you know uh, it was more Catholics than ever before back in those days. Not so much now. Uh, there's still probably a great number of uh, members to the Catholic Church. Why do you think, you know, but the thing is, is when they had a situation or, you know, they, you know, uh, somebody reported something going on, they would send an investigator out uh, to investigate, which today is called a paranormal investigator, right? And they will report back to the Catholic Church on their findings. Uh, so... Why is that the church, why do you think the church, the Catholic church has went away from that? In this day and age where everything is possible. Well, you know, Catholic church, you know, if you're trying to get them to do an exorcism, um, it's almost impossible to get them. Um, they want absolute proof. They want documentation, everything else. So that's why, I'm, like I said, I'm not a priest. I'm not ordained or anything like that. But I do work of what a priest does. Uh, I'll do a Roman Catholic house blessing. I'll do a full submersion baptism. And, um, and with the grace of God and those angels... They help me out, and I'm successful with it. Um, because if you're asking for the Catholic Church to help you, you're most likely not going to get the help. Exactly. Yeah. You know, compared to Methodist, Baptist, uh, uh, you know, there are so many different religions oh, out there. Oh, i got to tell you something, Terry. Now that you mentioned, yeah. now that you mentioned Baptist... Um, back in the 70s, uh, I wrote an article for the Sacramento Bee. I'm, a, I'm also to a journalist. So I have, like I said, I have 73 books out there. I do a lot of writing. Um, I wrote an article about cults. So I investigated the Hare Krishna, the Moonies, the People's Temple, you, uh, uh, Reverend Jim Jones, you, you know about him, um, uh, the Church of Scientology, and the Church of Satan. And I w actually went to San Francisco to interview a lot of these cult members. That was my mm -hmm. that was based on the article that I was writing. And at the Church of Satan, they actually gave me a necklace, and I thought, oh, you know, I was young, and I was like, oh, that's like a cool necklace. It's goat head and all this sort of stuff. Then all of a sudden, I had an, an attachment. Terrible things were happening to me. Um, my finances, uh, I totaled out my car. Just one thing after another was happening to me, all negative stuff. 
So I took that necklace, I said, there's something with this necklace, threw it into the Sacramento River. <laughs> yeah. But still, bad things were happening to me. So I went to those two priests that trained me how to do bless a house. And uh -huh. I said, I need to be baptized. And I said, I have an attachment. And they said, well, read these books, and we'll, then we'll baptize you. So I read the books, and I brought them back. And they said, well, read these three more books. I said, what are you talking about? I could die tomorrow. And I said, I need to be baptized now. And so that really just kind of really upset me. So, and also, too, I didn't want to just be sprinkled on. I want a full submersion baptism. So, right. yeah, so I went into a Baptist church, and the preacher was up there, and he looked at me, and the whole congregation was looking at me, because it's 